Hey, this is Charlie, and this is Arpeggio, and this is the Arpeggiator Overlay. It's got a huge number of features packed in here, but the main three things that it's designed to do are create custom ARP styles, create custom ARP rhythms, which are saved with each style, and it also lets you toggle the sorting of these note parameters that you see down here at the bottom, gate, length, level, slide, and shape. So you can decide which parameters you want sorted with the notes. So the first thing we want to do is activate the overlay. You can see here there's a one next to the word arpeggiator. So we want to hold down the play button and hit the number one, and now it's activated. The arpeggiator overlay has four main pages, and the pages button here cycles through them, and the LEDs, these three LEDs here, show you which page is activated. When all the LEDs are off, the sort option page is activated. When we press it once, now the base order page is activated. When the second LED is lit, the mod order page is activated. And when the top LED is lit, we have access to the ARP banks. The arpeggiator overlay takes a unique approach to creating arpeggios, which gives you the ability to create millions of unique ARP styles. The way it works is you start with a base note order of either up, down, sequence, reverse, or random. And then you add modifiers to that which change the order, and then you can stack even more modifiers. Here is a sequence to demonstrate. It's 16 notes in the C scale, and each note is played only once. Now, you might think this is kind of a boring sequence, but it will actually get us some interesting results, and the simplicity of it will help us to better hear the different ARP styles more than a more complex sequence. Now let's activate the bass order page and go through the bass note orders. Right now it's set to sequence. The Roman numeral 1 LED indicates that the base order page is activated. And the Roman numeral 1 here corresponds to the options of the base order page along this row. Right now it's set to sequence. We can see the Roman numeral 1. If we go up to sequence, the LED is lit. So it plays in the order that the notes are entered. Now, the base order of up is activated. And now it's down. Sequence. Reverse, which plays the sequence backwards. And then, random. Let's go back to up. For most of this demonstration, the bass order will be set to up, which will really help you to hear the modifiers better. So we have the bass note orders of up, down, sequence, reverse, and random. Any two of these bass note orders can be combined. Here we have the style button, which allows you to toggle between parts A and B. So when the LED is on, we have access to part A. And when it's off, we have access to part B. Right now, A is set to up, and B, nothing is selected. So what we can do is, if we want up and then down, for part B, we can select down. So part A is up, and part B is down. But as I said, any of these can be combined. So we can have up and then random. Or we can have down and sequence.
So let's set it to up and then down. Now another thing we can do is we can shuffle the notes so that parts A and B, instead of all notes from part A playing and then all the notes from part B playing, we can play them every other note. We can do that with the A, B, mix button. So now parts A and B are shuffled. And you can hear if I turn it off, it goes back. So you can mix any two of these bass note orders. But for this demonstration right now, I'm just going to have part A and part B is not going to have anything. So we've got it set just to up. And you can hear that. Now, the first modifiers are still on the bass order page. We have half and we also have quarter. Half is going to split your sequence in half and will play the second half backwards, like this. Quarter is going to split your sequence into four parts. It'll play the first part forward, the second part backwards, the third part forward, and the last part backwards. And it sounds like this. So that's it for the base order page, and one thing to note is that each of these options keeps your sequence the original number of notes that it was when you created it. Now when we move to the mod order page, some of these options will actually make your sequence longer than it was. So as with the base order page, the mod order page Roman numeral 2 here corresponds to the options on this Roman numeral up here. So let's hear what these options sound like. And one thing to note here is that the non-underlined options and the underlined options are stackable. So you can pick one of these and you can stack one of these. And the mod order options we have are inside out. Inside out is going to play the first and the last notes alternating until it gets to the middle of the sequence. Outside in is going to do the reverse of that. It'll play the middle notes until it gets to the outside. Skip forward will play the odd numbered notes and then the even numbered notes. Skip backwards will play the odd numbered notes and then the even numbered notes backwards. Alternating first will play the first note every other note. Alternating last will play the last note every other note. And zigzag will go up two and back one, up two and back one till it gets to the end of your sequence. Inside out. Outside in. Skip forward. Skip backwards. Alternating first. Alternating last. And 
zigzag. Now, one of the options that I really like is to set it to alternating first, but then set the base order to random so that each time the sequence plays, the first note is different. And we can get really wild, long arc styles when we add style B and set that to something else. Now remember, this is just a 16 note sequence, but we've got style A, you know, set to random, style B set to down, and then the style A modifier is alternating first, and the style B modifier is outside in and zigzag. And I think it's just fun to play with changing the ARP styles and sort of just see what happens. Each ARP style gets its own arpeggiator rhythm. It can be up to 16 steps long, and if we push the rhythm button, these buttons become steps that can either play a note or be a rest. There are two pages. The first page is steps 1 through 8, and then the second page is steps 9 through 16. And we can turn the rhythm knob to make the rhythm longer or shorter. Also, we have the swing. If we turn up swing, we can add syncopation. The parameter sorting options toggle the sorting of each note parameter. And this is useful to turn on or off if, for example, you've created a sequence that has gate automation or different note lengths that have created a rhythm that you want to maintain while changing the order of the notes. Okay, so for example, we've got a sequence here that's got some gate automation and different note lengths. And you can hear that it's created this rhythm. The notes are playing from lowest to highest. 
Now if we set it from highest to lowest, you'll hear the rhythm go in reverse. But if we want to keep that rhythm, we can turn gait and length sorting off. So now when we change the note order, it will maintain that rhythm. Or if we set it to random, the notes are randomized, but the gate and length rhythm is maintained. When the third LED is lit, we have access to the art bank pages. There's four pages, and each page has six styles. The pages are represented by the numbers 3, 4, 5, and 6 here, and these correspond to the LEDs that are lit. So 3 is the, the LED 3. If we go to the next one, now 3 and 1 are lit, and that corresponds to 4. 3 plus 1 is 4. If we go again, 3 plus 2 is 5, and 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 6. The currently selected page becomes the default that's accessed everywhere else on the instrument. On this page, you can select ARP styles with the buttons here. Buttons 1 through 6. And also with the switch. And it will show the selected as you move. The previous and next buttons load the previous and next ARP styles. They're just another way to switch between styles. The save button saves the changes that you've made to the current ARP style. Test will load a test sequence so you can hear your style if you haven't already loaded a sequence. Reset will just reset the ARP style to the previous save and get rid of your changes. Clear will load the default ARP style for that switch position, up, down, sequence, reverse, etc. So hopefully this video gave you some ideas on all the cool ways that you can mix and mangle up your melodies with the arpeggiator overlay. But if you want a basic overview of arpeggio's main features, then click on over to this video here. It's going to help you get started making music with arpeggio how to change the synth presets, and how to create and save your own melodies. So check it out.